Remember way back in the dark ages of the mid 80s, Volkswagen, they grafted one of these on this. In the ensuing 35 years, they've attempted to make what is really a very good car as great as the GTI. But if we're being honest with each other, their efforts, valiant though they have been, have not exactly hit the mark. Well, they've changed the recipe big time. Now they want to turn us loose on some amazing roads in eastern Tennessee to understand a very important question. Is the L now really interchangeable with the T? First things first, love me some Tennessee. Second, this is the GLI. Okay, definitely the GLI. Smell some rubber there. Now that we got that out of the way, let's focus on being more of an adult. Uh, that is definitely more power than the car we drove not far from here in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, this is the Foothill Parkway as we get to Tail of the Dragon. Can't really do much shooting on Tail of the Dragon because there is a ridiculous amount of traffic. So the secret is the roads are better away from Tail of the Dragon. Uh, that being the case, this is normal mode and it works as well as it does in a GTI. So not really much to discuss there. However, there is an additional mode in this one. Let's switch to Sport, which changes the throttle mapping. And I feel we should try this again, because what else do we get to do? This in a sedan on a relatively traffic-free road in Tennessee. Okay. Right. Now this is with sport mode. It never gets old, does it? Especially when you leave smoke back there. Uh, to be very frank with you, it doesn't make a huge difference off the line. However, we drove this car from Knoxville this morning up to the Fiddle Parkway. And you do notice the difference in the throttle mapping in traffic. God, this is fun. For the life of me, I do not understand why I continually repeat this stuff when we've covered it so many times before. But being we have the engine, a stunning backdrop, and a bit of an audience, here we go. EA AAA two liter four cylinder direct injected gasoline turbocharged engine. In this application, good for 228 horsepower that comes in at, wow, 5,000 RPM and 258 pounds of torque that comes in at 1,750 RPM, a 9.8 to one compression ratio and anything you want as long as it's two different transmissions, a six speed manual, which we are driving in this episode and a seven speed DSG which we will drive at some point in the future. Note about the transmission, if you have ever driven any Volkswagen GTI before, uh, this is what you get in the GLI. So there really isn't much to talk about there. Uh, I have been accused of saying, it ain't no GT3 in cars where it doesn't apply, so I'm not gonna compare it to a transmission in a Porsche, but I will compare it to the transmission in say like a Mazda Miata, where it's very tight, very short shifts. That is not the case in GTIs and GLIs. I've been trying to determine if that sound, the engine note, is artificial or real, and it's more of a commentary on the state of cars today than this specific car, in that we have to ask if it's fake or not. I would be hard pressed to believe that it is fake in a car of this cost, especially considering the heritage of the GTI. Let's say the theme of this episode is what makes a GLI a GLI. If that's the case, we already covered the engine change, but I would argue there's more important changes, and those are the suspension bits that impact driving dynamics. In the front, struts with coil springs, which sounds awfully familiar to the regular Jetta that we drove in Durham. What changes here are two things in the front. Number one, a 24 millimeter anti-roll bar, and the brakes, they're the Golf R brakes, 13.4 inch diameter rotors, only in the front. 
Now the back, this is the biggest change. They rip out the torsion beam, which was good in that car, and in this case, they add in a fully independent rear suspension. After all, Farfragnugan, whatever you want to say for German Volkswagen branding lines. But then they add in a 21.7 millimeter anti-roll bar. Very important production note for this specific episode. The car we are driving is an S 35th anniversary edition. Aside from the badging, what that means is this is fitted with adjustable dampers. So that in conjunction with the independent rear suspension, let's understand what that does for driving dynamics. Please don't try this at home. Let's actually stay in third gear as we go around some lovely turns here. And the first thing you notice is there's significantly more composure back there. Like in that uh, torsion beam in the base car, it was surprisingly good. That was improved ride quality. Like with a torsion beam, you expect bad ride quality, uh, but that was tuned very well, so it worked well there. Here, this is what you'd expect in a German sports sedan. You'd expect more Audi, low-end BMW with a rear-end suspension like this, and you get it. Like, let's push it a little bit harder, going uphill, change the plane of motion. And even if you disturb things at high speeds, there is a significant difference. I would argue, just based on driving dynamics alone, the premium you pay for a GLI is worth it. Add in the extra power, and then it's more exciting. There's this old saying, it goes something like this. The reports of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. It applies to this case, not so much the GLI specific, but sedans. Everyone will tell you, including Ford, GM, and Chrysler, that sedans are dead. No one's buying sedans and crossovers. That's the wave of the future. Now granted, that's wrong for broken car guys and gals like you and I, but everybody, the smart money, says that the baby buggy set needs a crossover. Well, apparently that's not exactly correct and has been exaggerated more than greatly, at least in the Volkswagen world. Because last year, 2018, the volume car they had wasn't the Atlas, wasn't the Tiguan, wasn't even the Golf. It was the Jetta. That is the reason why a GLI exists. Bit of a recap from the Jetta that we drove in Durham. That car is a C-segment car that is built to a price standard. So it was surprising to find out that it didn't have crappy steering. The steering was actually pretty good in that car. Here, this is a C-segment car built to a heritage standard. So you'd expect better steering, and that is definitely what it's blessed with. It's a little bit weightier, uh, and it frankly makes the car a lot more fun to drive. You notice it from the minute that you start driving it, uh, but it's clearly the weight is better on roads like this. Around town, you frankly wouldn't notice a huge difference between the two. Let's shake things up a little bit here and play a round of the options game, not in the hangar. Today's contestant, the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta GLI, 35th anniversary 20T for a base price of $26,995. To that, we add packages and options. Tornado red with a black roof, no charge. Titan black interior, that is cloth, no charge. Summer performance tires, no charge. I really like where this is going. Six speed manual transmission, no charge. Destination charge of $995, gotta have something like that. Uh, for a total suggested vehicle price of $27,900. $90. I think that's the first time in like many years we have played around in the options game for less than 40 grand. Wow. Okay, because we can, we gotta do it again. Bist du fertig? Ich auch. Now I'm doing this not just to smoke their tires, uh, but to prove a point. Uh, Volkswagen goes out of their way to share with us that uh, the GLI, as well as the GTI, have this stability control, this dynamic control, and then this cross differential lock, and of course, limited slip differential, all fitted as standard. You do notice, especially the stability control and the dynamic control over the car, I've forgotten all the different names for it, uh, you do notice it on a road like this. This was a great choice for them to let us loose here in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. Uh, but what we just did back there, notice the car didn't go from side to side 
if you try that in other front wheel drive cars, you'd probably go off that way. That is a big function of the combination of the limited slip as well as the locking diff. A top tip about the Smoky Mountains that they don't tell you before you get here. Uh, there are a ton of bugs here and not just in the hot, soupy summer. Uh, so while we swat these guys away, let's get back on that theme of what makes a GLI a GLI. Uh, and it turns out there's some visual differences, but it's a lot of small things that add up to make the GLI. Like for example, uh, the honeycomb grill with a red stripe. It says GLI everywhere on the car. Rear spoiler, different bumpers in the front and the back, 18 inch wheels that are unique to the car. The brake calipers are red, and then there's LED lights. You guys probably can't see from all the cameras that are mounted, but we are flanked with a GLI in the front and a GLI in the back, which is an unusual experience because you get to see yourself coming and going. And it makes me think, is it not enough in terms of visual differentiation between a GLI and a regular Jetta? Like, would one want more of like a Subaru WRX STI type of differentiation? Or is the don't let them see you coming, is that the right way to go? Think of that as an additional question here in the episode. Let me know in the comments below. We need to come back to this options game thing because I feel like I misled you. Uh, this is not the base car. This 35th anniversary technically is a trim package and it costs $1,000 above the base S car, and then there's the Autobahn above that, which has like everything in it, including a sunroof, that special like virtual cockpit they kind of ripped off from Audi, and a better stereo and a better screen. So what really is the 35th anniversary? It's a trim package and then some, so like the badges here and on the seats, the door jams, the mats, that kind of stuff, but it also adds gray wheels and most importantly, adjustable dampers. So if the sign says motorcycles, high crash area, next 11 miles, that can only mean one thing. You and I are officially on Tail of the Dragon. Now, this is a wonderful road if there was no traffic on it. However, what they don't tell you is there is so much traffic on it, usually motorcycles and, of course, slow-moving RVs. But I still feel like you and I need to get a little bit of time on the official Tail of the Dragon. Uh, and with it, let's discuss ride quality as we push on the... God! That's surprisingly good. Wow, the stability of the suspension changes drastically. And I don't think it's just that independent rear. I think it's the adjustable dampers in this car. Downright fun to drive. And wow, what a great road at that. This is, this is good. Last year's GLI, not as good. And you know, I found out a fun fact about it, which I had no idea. Turns out the 18 was only available in an automatic, where this clearly is available in both an automatic as well as a DSG. What's important to note here is put aside the 35th anniversary, this is an S, which means it's the basic car with a manual transmission and the adjustable dampers. That translates to 3,217 pounds. If this were to magically become an Autobahn, which is fully loaded with the DSG, it would be 3,274 pounds. Okay, those numbers are all fine and good, but what does that translate to? Yes, it's a more balanced car because it's lighter, but more importantly, it's a break from what we're getting in so many modern cars nowadays. They're all 4,000 plus pounds. Yeah, we've been driving some of the smaller Hyundai Kias that are made out of a lot of high strength steel. Those are 28 to what this is, 3,200 pounds. But outside of that, everything is 3,800 pounds, 4,500 pounds even 5,000 pounds, like in some of those Mercedes. So this, frankly, is just a nice break from all of the overweight cars we've been driving. Back at the hangar, which means we have to focus on the elephant in the room, and no, it is not. 680 horsepower out of a very distant cousin of the car we just drove in Eastern Tennessee. Rather, it's is L truly interchangeable with T? Spent a lot of time thinking about this on the flight home and over the past couple of days, and it comes down to this. The GTI used to be here and the GLI used to be here. And then over 35 years, they started doing this, and I would argue it was about here. But now, on MQB, meaning they're on the same platform, 
the differences here. It really comes down to packaging and design for that matter. For me, it's not even those two things. For me, it's color and trim. Uh, I spoke to Daniel, who is the product manager of the Jetta at Volkswagen USA, gave me some bad news. One cannot have the plaid seats, you know, the Verbery seats, in any derivation of the GLI. I think that is a terrible decision, one you and I need to change. So let's turn this into a focus group of sorts. I'm not looking for you to tell me how many of you would choose the plaid seats in a GLI. What I'm looking for is, would you A, choose the plaid seats, and B, which trim? Would you choose it with the base car only, or would you choose it with the Autobahn, meaning you would forego leather for the plaid seats? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV on Word, Motoman TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I wanna leave you with two things. Number one, programming update for the show. We are now going to be giving you new episodes every Saturday, so weekly every Saturday, look for that. Share that with your friends. Uh, and number two, uh, Kumo and I are a bit corrupt with power this week. So while you guys decide on seats, we're gonna drive this. Till we see you next time, Bishpeka.